Welcome to GCSA TV Virtual Live, presented in partnership with the Andersons, one of our GCSA TV live sponsors of the 2021 Virtual Golf Industry Show. I'm joined by Jan Beljan of Jan Beljan Golf Course Design and a past president of the American Society of Golf Course Architects. Uh, I've known Jan for 30 years and she has a wealth of knowledge on a variety of subjects, but today we're going to talk primarily about her efforts in designing more Ford T's at a number of facilities. You know, Jan, what was the inspiration there? Welcome, good to see you. Good to see you, thanks for having me. I appreciate the opportunity. Well, the inspiration was I know how I play and I know how, and I hit the ball a little bit longer than most women, yet so often I still couldn't reach par fours in, reg in regulation. So uh, then I started looking at, at, at the uh, USGA handicaps. I went through the 2 million they had in the database back in 2011, 2012. And I came up with an idea that based on how they did course ratings, how it might serve women better. And even though they're for, I don't know, 20, 40 years, we've had the, the proportion of women at about 20% versus 80% men. So um, I had uh, had one conversation with, with one golf course architect who said, well, why should I even bother moving tees? There aren't that many women who play. Mm -hmm. And I said, well, you know, if you have success, you may, you'll have more women playing. If, if it took you eight or nine or 10 strokes as a beginner to get on a par five and somebody has explained to you what par means, would you continue playing golf? So this, this was not a, 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 a US based golf course architect, by the way. So you can't, <laughs> you can't, can't uh, trim it down. Anyway, so I looked at that and then I, I saw that the USGA had uh, the bogey female golfer, hits the tee shot 150 yards and can get on a 280 yard par four and two. But then I looked at the stats and the stats say that over 50% of women have a handicap above bogey, above 26. And that fully 10.1% had a handicap between 39 and 40.4, which was the limit at the time. And I thought, how impressive is this? And they still play golf. Right. So yeah. if you think about what that means, you have uh, say you have a handicap of 40. We'll use a round number. 40 plus par is 112 right. plus at that time equitable stroke control. So if you count that all the strokes, you're truly talking about somebody who could be hitting, you know, taking 120 strokes. And that truly meant that they were playing from tees that were way too long for them. So. I did some math and I gave a presentation at the uh, 2012 um, PGA merchandise show on the main stage forum on exactly this. And it was probably the start of people really thinking about and understanding what it could mean for clubs. So I did a project and it took me a long time to come up with a name to, so that it would be gender neutral, age neutral, and skill neutral. Because there had been other golf course architects who had done uh, additional sets of tees or a more forward than the 5,000 yard set of markers, but they were called family tees and that which implied only families could use them. And I was at a club where exactly that, the, the tees were used once a month when the families played, no other time were they used, which I found unusual, or junior tees or ladies tees or fast tees, speed tees, express tees which implied that if you have a 36 handicap, you better be playing fast. That puts a lot of pressure on somebody who has a handicap like that. So I developed this and, and um, what I call scoring tees, gender neutral, age neutral, and skill neutral, because even the best player wants to learn to score better. So I took a hint from called collegiate golf coaches, and quite often they would have their, um, their players play from the most forward set of markers at their home golf course at least once a week for three reasons. 
they wanted them to learn course management. When you're playing from a set of markers so far forward, if you hit the ball far, you better know where you want to land it, right? So you can score. So course management was first. Then the second was, if you're going to land it somewhere, that means you better start sharpening your short game. And thirdly, it was learn to go low. So if somebody's playing from 4,000 yards and they shoot a 62, 65, they know they can do it. You still have to put the ball in the hole, right? right. So it's, it's for the best players as well as the, the beginners, the novices, the juniors, the elders. So this was, so it was very interesting when I had clients and I explained to them this process and that made sense to them. And beyond that, I, I said, you know, you really want to keep your members as long as you can until you get new members, right? Well, of course, um, you know, in 20, uh, 2010, Barney Adams, you may recall his name. He was the uh, founder of Tight Lies, Adams Golf. He was the one who got started with the Tee It Forward program. He he urged the PGA of America and the USGA to um, uh, accommodate players because he saw this too with the people he played that the guys he was playing with were taking so many extra strokes and were fatigued by perpetually hitting uh, a, a wood at the time and and then a wedge or a short iron into greens, which is how a lot of women play golf too. So he said he came up with some yardages and that, that thankfully the USGA and the PGA of America collaborated. And then in, in uh, 2011, they started T it forward. So here it is. It's nine years now. No, 10 years this year since T it forward began. And it seems like it may have been always part of our language, but it really hasn't. But it's it's um, so when he started that, then then he was really talking about it for the men. And actually, um, Darren, some of the women in your area, in Naples, are probably the smartest women I know. They said, where's ours? Where do we go to tee it forward? You just put you up in the front of the fairway? Well, is that being respectful of them as members or as golfers? Would you accept that? So that's when I decided that uh, I needed to come up with something that would help help everyone because if you say and 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 I'll re, you know go back to the the golf course architect who said there aren't that many women who play but people have known for a while that the economic power of women has been increasing and if um and my father and my five uncles were all club professionals and um they grew up caddying and they learned then, and it's still true today, if you keep her happy, the world is happy. Very true. That's so, very true. so, so uh, anyway, when the women said, where's ours, we need to have formal tees just like everything else. And once more formal tees were installed, then the guys were perfectly willing to go up to the, to the, to the teeing ground where the women had been playing because it was no longer designated for them. So one of the things Barney Adams talked about was, was uh, um, overcoming the male ego. And that's, those are his words, not mine. But, and, and, and he knew because he, he played that way. So, so that was the inspiration um, to, to try, to, because everybody could win and golf in general could win if we could have more people playing golf having more success early as novices or to have continued success at your club. I'm sure you have some, some gentlemen who have um, who's lost yardage as they've gained years and maybe they've moved forward to another yes. set of tees. Yeah. So, um, and I think it's happened everywhere, but as long as they seem not to be set on something that seems gender specific, very true and as you as you mentioned yes we have gone through a, a a renovation looking at the tea grounds getting it to play as it was designed to play back in 1992 um so we have certainly embraced it here and I, as you said i've enjoyed playing the different set of tees and using different clubs as i played a different set of tees and it's, it's a different game so love that story and you know how's the reception been 
Well, the reception's been very good because people, uh, once both men and women try playing from the most forward set of markers and they see what it can do for their games, um, then it's pretty well received. Initially, it's, it's almost always the longest hitting women who have objections. And uh, when we, that's their advantage. And that's their, that's their advantage in scoring. That's their advantage in their handicap. So they'd like to keep it. Most of us are that way. But, um, you know, so I've, I've um, in a couple of site visits in preparation as I was adding tees at clubs and they would be out with the green committee and the golf committee and the ladies would ask, they'd say, well, you know, I'd hit it through the fairway here. And I'd say, well, I'd ask, have you ever watched a professional golf tournament, you know, in person or on TV? Well, of course I have. Well, have you ever noticed that sometimes they choose a club other than a driver? You can make that choice too. This is where the club management comes in that helps you become a better golfer. So when people can see the advantage for themselves, it makes it easier for them to understand that they can improve their skills um, by using a more for, or by mixing up the sets of tees from which they play, depending on with whom they're playing. It's great. And, and, and you're right. You're spot on. We heard that same argument here when we added the T's closer and we went to a numbering system to try also for the gender neutral, neutrality. Um, you know, Jan, uh, how is it affecting short game errors? Is there any connection to the practice area, short game errors to the forward T's? Oh, sure. Well, and of course, the biggest thing is that the additional short game areas um, are, are being instituted by the people who have the land to do it. Not everybody has that space, but of course, um, some with if you have a qualified golf course architect, they can find the space that you know people at the club may not have seen, and it may take rearranging some golf holes. But whether whether it's built or not, what happens with the new with the short game areas is you have uh, more people taking lessons, more people learning from the putting green back, which of course helps people um, hone in on that segment, that one foot on either side of the golf ball where the club head meets the ball, right? And if you can get that pretty pretty well situated, then the rest of the swing can kind of fall in. So, so the short game areas, people are, are, when they start having more success and they're willing to invest more time in, in the short game instead of spending as much time as they do on the practice tee, hitting the long ball. That's terrific. Uh, Jan, I obviously have known you 30 years and you and I could talk for hours, but we are limited on time. Um, I know you have a website and I know that you are just love this industry and you love to communicate with people. Uh, remind me what your website address is. It's Jan. Beljan.com, J-A-N-B-E-L-J-A-N.com. Awesome. Well, Jan, thank you so much for being here today. And again, thank you to the Andersons Company for being a partner with us. And um, thank you. Good to see you thank all. You. Thank you. Thank you for the time. It's been an honor.